Phil Borman and I are from GlaxoSmithKline and we wish to talk about the perils of using rounded data which we have observed in our work as analysts and statisticians. Firstly, we're going to look at an example involving a chemical analytical measurement method which measures impurities. The situation is a precision study which looks at the variability of the method in two laboratories. I have the analyst from Lab B with me. Look, our variability is much smaller than Lab A. Can I have a bonus? That's good. Let's see if we can see why by first plotting the data. Here's the data plotted. See how good we are compared to Lab A. Hang on, I'm not sure this plot is correct. It only shows two points. We did do six. Looking at the evenly spaced points, it appears reported data to two decimal places has been plotted, and that's why not all the points can be seen. Let's plot the recorded data. Oh, so actually both labs are performing very similarly. Yes, and we can see the points better. So the moral of the story is to always use recorded data, otherwise known as unrounded data, in calculations and visualisations. In our work, we've observed people using rounded data and seen the problems this causes. Our paper discusses some of the reasons why people do this and how to address those. So here is a visual reminder to always do your calculations and plotting of data on recorded data, not reported data. If it is difficult to obtain recorded data, then we recommend the rule of thumb of ensuring you have at least two more decimal places in your data than the reported format of the final result. This will give similar results to the recorded data, and thus is effectively unrounded data. This is Phil, and I want to discuss another example which again highlights the importance of using recorded data. I will then go on to use this example to illustrate the difference between nominal and effective specification limits. This slide illustrates a relationship between a drug product critical quality attribute and an input material. This graph has been plotted using the reported data and as you can see has resulted in a stripey grid effect in this plot. In addition to this issue, there are a number of data points which are overlaid with one another. It would have been much better to plot the recorded data which would have avoided these issues. The drug product CQA in this example is controlled by specification limits and these are expressed as 20 to 24, which means each reported result has to be greater than 20 or less than 24. The specification limits as stated have been plotted on the graph and can be called nominal specification limits. However, because the format of the specification limits uses whole numbers, any data point which rounds up to 20 or down to 24 is considered within specification. This is known as the rounding method which is used in the pharmaceutical industry. Specification limits can be expressed at their nominal limit, as shown, or at their effective limit. The effective specification limits have now been plotted on the same graph along with the nominal specification limits. Care must be taken when choosing which ones to use. Nominal specification limits are often used to avoid appearing different from the specification limit as written. In this example there is a data point in the top right of the graph which appears outside of a nominal specification limit above 24, but falls inside the effective specification limit below 24 and a half. This can lead to confusion and for this reason it is recommended to add a footnote to explain that the data point is within specification despite it appearing outside of specification. If a graph is for scientific understanding it is often more useful to draw the effective specification limit if any limit is needed. Effective specification should also be used when driving statistics based on specifications, such as process performance metrics, as this will provide the most reliable estimates. If nominal specifications are used, then in the above example, any process capability metrics will have been underestimated. From the two examples which have been covered, we now hope that it is clear why it is always better to work with recorded data for calculations and visualisation. Remember the rule of thumb of ensuring you have at least two more decimal places in your data than the reported format of a final result. It is important to understand the difference between nominal and effective specification limits and when they should be used. Remember to always use effective specification limits when calculating specification based statistics. Marion and I would like to thank Simon for starring as the analyst in the precision example.